Alright, I really didn't want to do this to you, Paul, but I need to point out that you brought this on yourself, mostly because your video was so condescending and arrogant, which I feel was unnecessary. You say over 200 hours of research and you came to the inescapable conclusion that explosives were used in the demolition of the building. The research for this video, you know, subtract when I left my first comment to what I'm doing now and you'll find how long it took me to research this. That's all I will need. First off, I respect you. At least a little bit. I wouldn't have made this video if I didn't respect you. Now, you should know, if you're making a bogus claim, you need to provide the evidence. You don't need to tell me to go research it. You need to bring your pearl of wisdom on here to YouTube and share it with the rest of us. If you dare me to go use mathematics to prove you wrong, you're thinking of this bass backwards. I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway in an almost unfathomable extent of generosity just to indulge you. I think you owe me for this. First off, I don't know where you got your information of how long it took the towers to fall. You're correct that the free fall speed from the top of the tower would be 9 seconds. 9.22 seconds. You're incorrect about the actual speed the towers fell. The first tower in about 10 seconds, the second tower in about 11. In both cases, the towers slowed as they approached the 30th and 40th floor, depending on which tower we're talking about, which stayed up for almost 20 additional seconds after the collapse. You have to say approximately free fall speed. 35 seconds as opposed to 9 seconds is a quarter of the speed. That is not approximately free fall speed. And even if I give you the benefit of the doubt and say, well, 10 seconds as opposed to 9 seconds, that's a 10% difference. When you're talking about something like physics, that's a big difference. Also, no one thinks to debunk the speed of the collapse because all the experts understand the characteristics of how fire burns and the architecture of the World Trade Centers. There was no real reason to indulge in a, well, I'm amazed at how fast the towers fell because it's kind of irrele an irrelevant factor that only the loonies come up with. But again, I'm here indulging it, so let's continue on. The pancake shape is really simply explained. Have you ever heard or seen something called a charcoal chimney? If you haven't, I'll explain the principle to you. Also, I'm going to be linking tons of things over in the side. Hot air rises. Picture a tin can. Poke holes in the bottom of it. The bottom of this can will now allow air to come into... Uh, I got distracted. Uh, uh, okay, poke holes in the bottom of that can. This will allow air to come in through the bottom, out through the top, and make a very streamlined fire. You can actually light charcoal with this with no lighter fluid. It's amazing, just the nature of fire and how it works. I need to find my place here. It's a it's very fi efficient way to burn something. The towers are the same shape, except they are the fuel. They don't have fuel in there. The fire would burn from the inside near the shaft where it has the most oxygen to make the best use of the fuel that it's got. Concrete won't burn. The outside's not going to burn. The other source of oxygen is from the inside. These are going to burn the most quickly from the core out. And then it's going to pancake in on itself because all of the damage is inside near the middle of the shaft. You seem to want to treat these as though they were building blocks, solid masses. You know very well that this was not a solid mass. Once the middle collapsed, everything sunk in on itself. That's why you got a nice, neat collapse like that. It's really not rocket science here. Uh, these are not solid objects. I love your picture, though, your building block pictures. I don't have any fancy visual aids like that, although I will point out that I'm going to be linking everything that I have used over here in the side. And if you're interested in checking some of this, go right ahead. Uh, now let's take the basic shape of the towers. The design left the most structural support in the middle by the elevator system I was just talking about. Let me give you some dimensions. The towers were 208 by 208. There are some 95 elevators in the building. I'll link a schematic over in the side. The total area taken up by the elevator shafts is 38 by 88. So if you want to figure that out, you find 
you can find how big the big hole in the middle of the building was to allow air to travel up through there. Then you figure out the dynamics of what fire is and how the fire chimney effect uh, worked on the Twin Towers and you'll have a pretty good idea of what happened. Roughly, I'm um, looking at the numbers here which I again will link over in the side, roughly a quarter of the uh, floor space was a hole that would allow air up. Uh, as far as the pulverization of concrete, your second strongest argument, it's really utter bullshit. All right, in controlled demolitions, the explosions cause almost none of the debris. I'll link a controlled explosion, a controlled demolition implosion up in the side. And you tell me which bit causes the debris, whether it's the little bitty explosions that cause the building to collapse or the massive kinetic energy of the downfall of everything that was that building. Controlled demolition puts explosives in, in buildings in very key support areas. The explosives don't throw the debris. The pressure and energy from the collapse of the building does. Tell me in the linked video what you really think is going to throw the debris. Also, the World Trade Center is roughly a 500,000 ton building. You're telling me you don't think that's enough kinetic energy to cause some dust to blow around the city? As far as definitions go, you know, pulverized, I agree with pulverized. Pulverized, reduced to dust or powder, as in by pounding or grinding. That's the dictionary.com definition. I won't be linking that in the site. I trust you can figure that out on your own. It is not disintegrate to reduce to particles, fragments, or parts. I guess technically it is, but we're not crushing atoms here. Matter is not disappearing. There is enough energy to grind it into itty bits and to throw it around everywhere. We're not missing pieces of the World Trade Center. We know where they are. It's not really being reduced to particles other than kind of what you said, the little dust that blows away and blows around the city. Nothing was destroyed into nothing. You seem to claim that parts of the World Trade Center are somehow missing. There was, and explosives had to do this. Explosives had to do this. Explosives are a rapid expansion, all right? Usually, you know, gunpowder or something like that. It's a rapid expansion of gas or something like that. You can't get a rapid expansion like that to blow things into nothingness. You, you, you know for a fact that the towers were brought down. How about sharing some of them pearls of insight with the rest of us instead of just telling us to do the research? You know, it's been now two hours for me to look up things to support this refutation of your bullshit. All I know from you is that you told me to get back to work. You told me go and research it and do it yourself and I'm sure that you'll come up with the same conclusion as me because I'm right. If you want to be right, you have to provide me with some evidence. See this over here on the side or over there on that side? I can't remember which because I think the video is mirrored. I'm going to put all the links I used in. If you want to make a bogus ass claim like that, provide me some evidence or at least some links. Thank you. Good night.